How important is the preamp to your guitar and or bass tone? Well, hopefully we are gonna answer that question in this video because we are about to compare three different preamps and see how it affects the guitar and bass tone. What is up everyone, Jeremy here. In this video, we are comparing three different preamps using both a guitar and a bass. We are going to compare the API 512V with the Focusrite Scarlett 8i6 3rd Gen with the Neural DSP Quad Cortex. We are going to use both guitar and bass. All right, so for the actual comparison, what you're gonna hear is just the straight up guitar and bass DI signals without any processing on them. They will be back to back to back to back with the individual preamp information on the screen so you can see it as you're hearing it. And hopefully this will be a great way to just quickly hear one and then have it flip to the next and see if you can hear any differences. And we'll start with the guitar, then we will go into the bass. So with that, let's have a listen to the guitar DI's. So those are the guitar DIs. Could you hear much of a difference? Being completely honest, there's not a massive difference that I can hear in these. The ones that I note that have the biggest difference is really kind of on the, 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 the far ends of the spectrum, either the low end or the top end. And those specifically being the API preamp when I plugged in through my DI box and then went into the preamp and turned on the mic setting, I got all of a sudden quite a bit more low end on it through that. And then on the Focusrite Scarlett, when I turned on the air setting, as you would expect, I get more top end because that's what this emulation is supposed to be, is kind of like a, a top end saturation. So you get more top end on your signal. So those were really the biggest differences that I noticed. So let's go ahead and have a listen to the amped up guitars now and see how the DI signals affect the resulting heavy guitar tones. And let's have a listen. All right, so there you go. Those are the amped up signals using the preamps. Now, to me, there is not a massive difference there. It is very, very tiny, very, very tiny. Uh, almost unnoticeable, unless of course you know exactly what you're listening for. But if you hadn't told anyone and you just put all these back to back, no one would probably even notice. But the things that I'm hearing are the API preamp when I went through my DI box and then went into the preamp and had the mic setting turned on. That sounds, and of course the, the, the three to one, which is a setting on the API preamp that reduces the output so that you can push it harder to add a touch of additional saturation on the output by essentially clipping the, the output converter, I think is what it is, but all the details are that on the, on the website if you wanna know specifically what that setting does but it's something to that effect. Now, that signal sounded the fattest to me, the thinnest one, and again, these are very minor differences, but the thinnest one sounded like it came from the, the line-in on the quad cortex. Again, 
Very, very, very minor differences. Uh, you put all these back to back, you probably can't notice a difference, but these are very, very minor differences at this point. So those are the amped signals. Now what we're gonna do is go ahead and switch to the bass and start with the bass DI. So let's have a listen to those. All right, so that is the base DI comparison. Did you hear much of a difference? Again, I didn't really. It's not a massive difference. It's very, very, very subtle. So, so far, things are leaning towards, you don't necessarily need any fancy preamps to record guitar and bass at home. Uh, my Focusrite Scarlett is clearly holding up against you know, the Quad Cortex and even the API preamp. So with that, let's go ahead and see how things hold up when we turn on Mammoth and the other signal chain to get my entire processed high gain bass tone here and see how these preamps sound through the entire signal chain. So let's have a listen. All right, so there you go. Those are the high gain bass tones running through my typical high gain bass tone signal chain. And did you hear a difference? Because I didn't really, there's not much of a difference there. If, if there's any difference, it's so small, I really couldn't even hear it. So again, that kind of just throws more weight to the idea that you don't need any fancy or expensive preamp to record great sounding guitar and bass tones at home. So your, your Focusrite Scarlett will get the job done easily. You know, we're comparing this to a much more expensive API preamp, and I'm not hearing a whole lot of a difference. So, all right, with that, now what I wanna do is you've heard all these individual tones, so now I wanna give you some examples of what they sound like in context. So let's go ahead and have a listen to an entire mix with drums, the bass tones, and then the guitar tones that you just heard with all the signal chain and every, all the processing on, and just kinda see what these all sound like in a mix because Soloed is great, but you know if you're like me, a producer, a mix engineer, uh, on top of being a musician, then you want to know how these things are going to hold up in a full context. So let's have a listen to those. All right, so that sounds really good to me. I mean, the, everything is kind of sitting in this mix really well together. The tones sound fantastic. And those were both from the API preamp. So that was both the guitar DIs using the API preamp and the bass. So let's flip to the quad cortex and see how those tones sound, hold up.
that is the quad cortex, uh, both on the guitar and the bass. Now that's just the DI signal. All the processing is done in the DAW, again, using Mammoth on the bass and the Neural DSP Omega Ampworks Granifier on the guitar tones. Again, more info on all of the settings that I use for the bass and the guitar tones will be in the description of the video. And of course, if something is missing there, just hit the comments and ask down there what I use. I'd, I'd be happy to answer any of those questions. But with that, let's move to the Focusrite Scarlet. There it is, the Focusrite Scarlet on both the guitar and the bass. Now again, that's the DI signal coming from that interface, that audio interface, the Focusrite Scarlet 8i6 third gen. All right, so there it is. You heard the API 512V, you heard the Neural DSP Quad Cortex, and you heard the Focusrite Scarlet 8i6 third gen. We heard DI audio samples comparisons. You heard it on guitar and bass. You heard the saturated signals. You even heard it in context. So what I wanna know now is what are your thoughts? So you heard it all, hit the comments and let me know your thoughts. Do you think the audio interface here or the preamps made any big difference whatsoever? Did you hear anything? Maybe you have a better setup than I do and you can hear even those smaller nuances better than me, but hit the comments and let me know your thoughts on each of these preamps and the comparison. Now, again, I wanna call out that there will be additional information down in the video description on things like what guitar I used, even guitar cables, the different plugins I use to process the saturated guitar and bass signals. So look for all of that there. And of course, if you feel like I missed something, feel free to ask that in the comments and I'd be happy to answer as well. Now with that, We'll go ahead and wrap up this video right there. I hope you found this interesting or helpful in some way. If you did, do me a huge favor and hit that like button down below and consider subscribing to my channel for more great content like this in the future. With that, I wanna thank you for watching and thank you for your support.